Well, hello everybody. Michael Soothing here. I better take a photo for the thumbnail, you know, because I, I never get good thumbnails, you know. And uh, here, let's try this. We'll get this up close. Like this, I think. It doesn't really show the fish very good, but try that one more time. Okay. Anyway, I thought what we would do today is look a little bit at um, fish species and learn something about the freshwater fish of North America. There's all different kinds in here and I'm obsessed with fish. All kinds of fish. I'm obsessed with fishing. I'm obsessed with water. My uh, sign is Pisces, you know. Not that I believe in any of that, but it's just, it fits for me to be obsessed with water and with fish. I've been told that I'm just a little bit slippery now and then, okay? Um, I don't know why anyone would think that. You don't think I'm slippery, do you? But, uh, anyway, no, I take it as a compliment in a way. Um, look. Evanrude Motors on the back. Yeah. And lots of nice fish on the front. Know your slippery fish. 91 fresh water fish of interest to anglers. Fully described in words and color pictures by Sports Afield. This was made, this looks pretty old. Ah, yes. This was made in 1969. Do you know it's been sitting in my book collection ever since? That's how long I keep things. Notice the pages are a little bit yellowed, you know, just a tiny bit. So, you know, the sunfishes is the first one. I'm surprised this is even in color, because they didn't, the colors are faded a little bit, maybe about a third faded, but most most illustrated books back then were black and white. Um, little low-cost booklets like this. But we start with the sunfish family. And they're actually, they can be very beautiful. Um, there's a red ear perch. What else we got here? We've got bluegills, we've got a red perch, crappie, there's a bunch, that's a crappie there, let's see, and um, let's see if we can identify them all. The green sunfish is this guy right here, that's the green sunfish, and Next one is the long-eared sunfish, that guy. See, he has kind of a long ear, doesn't he? Just a little bit, maybe. And then we have the infamous bluegill. And they do often look just like that. But I have seen them sometimes in the sun, shimmering with all kinds of iridescent colors when you pull them out of the water. I caught a really large one one time. What size was it? It was bigger than this booklet, and I'm not kidding. It was huge for a bluegill. Uh, my dad actually had it taxidermied for me, and I have it packed away for moving up here. But the one disappointing thing with the taxidermy is it does not capture faithfully, of course, the gorgeous colors of that fish. 
So what I'm going to do is one of my retirement projects will be to get some metallic iridescent hobby paints and realistically paint, painstakingly paint that giant bluegill with the proper purples and orange and green and turquoise and blue and so forth uh, until it looks more like when it was first caught. I kind of feel bad because we didn't eat it and I normally either eat my catch or throw it back so it can live to uh, swim around some more. My daughter recently caught a brown trout in a wild Sierra stream. I will show you a picture sometime. I think I have it on my phone. Hold on, I can show it to you right now, now that I think of it. Because she texted it to me. All I have to do is find her text and then I will be able to show you that little brown trout. I found her thread. Where is that thing? There it is. Let's make it bigger. There we go. And, uh, So we were able to gently undo it from the hook and put it back in the stream and it happily swam away. So um, all of you uh, animal lovers who don't want to see anything bad happen, this was a more of a purist angling experience. Uh, that fish lived just fine and by the way, the way we caught it, single little hook, no weight, toss it out into the water, kind of like fly fishing, but um, we fly lined it out, you know, but um, and let it drift down in the current, you know, with uh, n no split shot or weight or anything like that. Fun way to catch wild stream trout, and that was a wild fish. Um, not a fish that was planted because um, they only plant rainbows in that area. Next up in the sunfish family we have the bass, heavily prized by sport fishermen of course. And we have um, the largemouth bass, the smallmouth bass, and the spotted bass. In that order, there's the large mouth. I can't see, but I'll have to peek around the corner. There's the small mouth, and there's the spotted bass. Some of those, of course, get really big 10, 15 pounds, you know, um, 20. They can get huge. Oh, there's also a fish called a rock bass that looks more like a sunfish, but that little guy there, there, this one, yeah. I get confused, of course, because the camera turn flips everything around backwards, and when I'm looking at the viewfinder and um, the display, and I cannot think in reverse the left and right hemispheres of my aspie brain are locked in place and cannot be versatile all right so these are pike I won't say much about pike because I've never caught one and I've pretty much caught all of the fish on these two pages but never caught a pike. So let's see what it says about the pike. These are fishes of legend, legend, wow, throughout Northern Europe and Northeastern North America. 
the legends arise out of their predacious habits. They're very ferocious. Their ferocious appetite and their cunning in avoiding the angle or spoon or plug. Yeah, they're pretty wary of, uh, they're pretty smart, you know. They know what's really food and what isn't. Unlike some of us, you know, who eat like a Twinkie. Uh, that would be like hitting a really badly made lure for a fish. Um, is it Twinkies that are rumored to last forever? If you stick one in a cupboard and it's not in its package anymore, you know, and then you, ten years later, it looks and tastes the same. Made out of some who knows what artificial ingredients. Uh, pike and pickerel. The members of this family are all fish eaters when adult, but they will also eat birds, snakes, and frogs. They usually live around cover. <coughs> feeding forays into open water or deep channels. They spawn in very early spring. I think I'm going to have to make this a whisper video because I'm losing my voice. But here are members of the Pike and Pickerel family. Okay. A family to which many of us belong. some kind of, oh, it's called a ling cod, but it's not really a cod at all, but it's a ferocious rockfish that looks like a pike, great big sharp bony teeth in its mouth coming out not only in the front but all down the, the upper bony plate of the jaw. One of those fixes itself on your hand and you can kiss your hand good by. It'll be a bloody mess. So you have to, when you fish for those, you steer well clear with respect for that mouth of theirs. The sturgeons, let's read about the sturgeons. Um, the sturgeons are real living fossils because they've been around so long. They closely resemble their foster not foster their fossil ancestors from 70 million years ago. They haven't changed much in 70 million years. There's about 25 different kinds, da da da. We have those on the west coast and they can get huge, you know, two, three hundred pounds, I think. I forget how big they can get, but they go up the Sacramento River. close by me here in Oregon, the Oompqua River, named after a Indian tribe, or is that an Indian name? It's an Indian name, but I don't know if it's a tribal name, or if it's what the Indians named the river. I'm going to have to look that up on the internet now. I'm curious, but anyway. Sturgeons have these big bony plates and stuff going down them, you know, like a dinosaur or something. And um, if you were to feel along their back, it would feel like they were armored, you know. I don't know which kind this is, the green sturgeon or the white sturgeon. Number 
six. Let's see what that one is. That's the white sturgeon. Yep. Okay. There's a shovel nose sturgeon and a short nose sturgeon. Here is the shovel nose. See. And I wonder why they named him that. I can't figure out why. Okay. So. <clears throat> These I have not seen. I've seen one kind of these. Let me show you. There's a log perch, a yellow perch, which I have caught some of, and an auger. And uh, what's that fourth one? Oh, a walleye. Remember on the um, pillowcase video I did, the walleye gets pretty big. I didn't know that was in the birch family, so now I am learning something along with you. And that's why I love doing videos. I wanted to be a marine biologist when I was young, you know, like many of you, you know. Um, lots of us said, oh, I'm going to be a marine biologist, right? So for every 10,000 kids that said that, there was like one opening, right? Carps and minnows. Do you ever feel like a minnow being hunted by a larger fish? I have felt that way from time to time. Carp is what they call a trash fish uh, as far as sportsmen are concerned. They don't taste good and they're not considered a sporting game fish because they're bottom feeders, you know, kind of like lawyers or politicians, you know, muck rakers, right? Raking the muck on the bottom of the pond. Um, what else do we have here? Well, they call this one a goldfish, but most goldfish are more orange, aren't they? But I have seen goldfish that look like that. What are these littler ones? Chubs and shiners. The golden shiner is that little guy there. Okay. Those are good bait fish for catching bigger fish. The Sacramento squaw fish is a local one. This one right here. And what else do we have here? The Colorado River squaw fish and the Columbia River squaw fish. I was at the Columbia River not too long ago. They have a fish that looks like that. These are bait fish that the bigger fish like to eat. How about the catfishes? It says here there are 24 kinds of catfish in the United States. Excuse me, my eye is itching just a little bit. There are 24 kinds of catfish but only nine of these are large enough to be of interest to anglers. An angler is what you call a fisherman, okay? Or vice versa. The blue catfish and flathead catfish are among the largest of freshwater fish, growing to over 100 pounds. Yes, they can get huge, but some other kinds only three or four inches in length. You know, that's not very big, you know. 
So, remind me not to ever make any bad jokes because we need to leave the comedy to uh, the comedians. Spawning takes place in spring or early summer. Okay, I'm not going to go into the long, boring details, even though my purpose here is to put you to sleep. But anyway, here is a picture of a catfish. One kind. Which kind is that? Looks like a channel cat. Let's see. Oh, I was right. Because, see, I've caught channel cats. They get pretty big. I caught one that was about 14 pounds in Lake Shasta in California. But I have also caught smaller ones in other lakes. And I've caught bullhead catfish and some other kinds. Flatheads. Um, these are called bullheads. They're less prized. But I can tell you that the channel cat that I caught was very tasty. Uh, I don't know what to compare it to. A little bit like lobster but not quite. I don't know how. It doesn't even taste like other kinds of fish. So, they're bottom feeders also, but not all the time. They're predatory. They'll eat other fish and things. The white basses. Yes, there aren't many of these in California, but there's one lake that has them not far from where I used to live. Um, but we also have striped bass. Stripers, they're called. They're also ocean run fish. If it's a big one, a really big one, like really big, then it might be an ocean going stripe, striped bass. We have those here in the Umpqua River also species of salmon, steelhead, trout, smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, sunfish, catfish, sturgeon, and stripers. There's a lot of fish that I can catch right here in the Umqua River. Um, once I become an expert on the local fishing, which I am not yet, but I hope to be. How about the premier fish of all, the salmon? The salmons. The salmon. I thought the plural of salmon was salmon. Didn't you? Okay, this family includes, in addition, the trouts, the chars, the white fishes, the she fish, and the Ciscos. That would be the Latin family known as Salmonidae. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know my Latin. So, you know, other than Semper Fi, and no, I'm not a Marine. So I'm not supposed to say that. But I have friends that are Marines, okay? Um, originally confined to the colder waters of the northern hemisphere. You now all the salmon have a somewhat similar life history. They hatch in fresh water, in rivers and streams, spend some time there, and then move down to the ocean, where they live and grow for a varying number of years. Later they return to their home stream to spawn in the autumn. If landlocked, some of them have been able to adapt to freshwater generations. Okay, so the name, oh, let's see, the Greek means hooked snout.
let's take a look and see what kind of salmon we got here. We have, first of all, the king of the salmon, the Chinook, which is the Indian name for king salmon, the Chinook. Next up, we've got the sockeye salmon. Typically, this red color when they're spawning. Uh, or is that the coho? I'm going to have to look that up now. I'm sure it's the sockeye. And the coho is, I think, this one, also known as silver salmon. Let's cheat and look on the next page. Yes, that's correct. That's the sockeye salmon, and that's the silver salmon, which is a coho. Um, I don't know which kind this is. I haven't seen one. But this guy here is the Atlantic salmon, right there. And the one on the bottom, this one is called a pink salmon. They're not as highly prized for their meat. What's that top one? Oh, it's called a chum salmon. Chum salmon. They're not very highly prized either. They're not as good eating as a king salmon or a coho or even a, or a silver or a sockeye. Let's see what it says about the mighty Chinook. This salmon is also often called a spring salmon in British Columbia because the spawning runs occur in late spring and early summer. That's the kind I was catching in Monterey Bay when I would go out with a friend of mine on his boat. Caught some nice king salmon, Chinook. Very tasty and very healthy full of omega-3s and other healthy things like that. Um, believe it or not, I'm going to go salmon fishing tomorrow from the shore, which is possible to do where I live. All right. The next talk about going from great to uh, non-great fish species next one is called the suckers. Um, sometimes in the world of poker, we refer to certain people at the table as fish, and we would think of them as suckers, basically. Those would be the people who throw their money in on bad hands, and, um, you know, there's a saying in poker, though. Um, yeah, you call the really bad players the fish. Uh, but there's a saying, because there's always players better than you. Unless you're the best in the world, there's going to be players that are worse than you and players that are better than you. So the saying goes, if you look around the table and you can't spot the fish at the table, then you're the fish, okay? So uh, we all have to have a little humility. Uh, and these guys have lots of humility because nobody likes the suckers. Uh, sport fishermen don't like them. They throw them back. Uh, they taste terrible, for one thing. Uh, you know, because they're muck feeders, you know, once again, like, uh, <laughs> listen to these names, the hog sucker, sometimes called hog nose, the short head red horse sucker, the long nose sucker, the small mouth buffalo fish, you know, all these different kinds of sucker fish. I remember catching this kind when I was a kid, and I thought it was great because catching any kind of fish was great back then. We would catch them on little balls of cheese, you know. We were trying to catch 
search trout, but anyway, speaking of which, the trout family, the trouts, whoever wrote this book doesn't understand that these are not plural. Anyway, Salmon and I, they're still in the same family as uh, Salmon. some beautiful fish here. Now the one I showed you that my daughter caught would be a brown trout, which was one of these right here. You can see the similarity. That's what it looked like. And of course uh, we have here a rainbow trout. I've got many hundreds of rainbow trout. It's a good eating fish. You know, fried up in a pan with a little bit of batter, a little breadcrumbs or flour and some spices. Um, I've caught a few of these. This is called a brookie or a brook trout. And they're kind of a pretty fish. They have, this picture doesn't show it, but they have a few little bright red spots going down them, all mixed in with the other spots. This one, I think, is a cutthroat trout down here. See how it's got kind of a red gill below its gill down there? Called a cutthroat trout. And um, let me double check and make sure. Yes, cutthroat, okay. I think that is a lake trout, number five, is a lake trout, there, and I don't know what number six is, but I'm pretty sure that number seven is the trout that I want to catch on my bucket list before my time is up. That would be the golden trout, but they only live at very high elevations in very pristine stream, uh, ponds and streams and lakes that are like, you know, nine or 10,000 feet up. You almost need an oxygen bottle to fish for these guys. Let's see what it says. Yeah. Originally only living in tributaries of the Kern River at elevations of 10,000 feet or more, golden trout have now been planted in high altitude lakes and streams of the Sierras and the Rockies. I don't know why, but they like to be up really, really high, which sounds strange for a fish, doesn't it? Um, they seldom exceed 14 inches. Um, yeah, so, you know, they're not big, but they're considered a premier fish because they're rare and beautiful. I don't even think I'd want to eat it. I think I'd want to throw it back, take a quick picture if I caught one, and then put it back, I think is what I'd want to do. So, then we have... circle those things live in the dolly varden there and those live far away from me i have not caught either of those kind last but not least we have the white fishes i'm running out of steam and running out of battery and running out of voice so we'll wrap this up quickly Sounds like a boring fish species. I've only caught one. Yeah, they're just kind of, they just kind of look like fish, you know? Nothing too exciting. They're um, the family of herring, whitefish, mountain whitefish, 
and she fish. Okay, whatever. And then there's the smelts. And that's these little fish, little bait fish, you know. Little smelt. And uh, smelts are an important bait fish when they're and streams, then the game fish get really big because they're gorging themselves on those smelt. So, um, anyway, that's going to do it for this edition of, um, you know, Know Your North America and European uh, Freshwater Fish Marine Biology lesson for today. So, until next time. I'm still trying to figure out if I can blow a bubble with this this uh, big league chew. I, I got a really good one off camera, of course, as I predicted, but never mind that. We're on this topic today. Okay, so until next time, everybody, don't ASMR it.